What's up everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we are finally kicking off the audio system build in my 1993 GMC Jimmy. If you missed the last episode, it's in the description box below. I restored the entire interior and it came out fantastic. Now we're gonna add a little bit of extra. I'll be splitting this process up into three separate videos. This one is gonna focus on installing a double din head unit. These came from the factory with a one and a half din, so it's gonna involve a little bit of creativity. The other two videos are gonna involve installing a whole suite of custom speakers throughout the interior, as well as installing the sub and building the amp rack. A while back, I uploaded a video outlining all of the plans for the Jimmy Sound System build, so if you haven't seen that or needed a little refresher, I put the link in the description box below. For the most part, the audio equipment is gonna be from a local North Carolina company called Sundown Audio. They make a lot of really awesome stuff. And for this build, I've come up to see Ben at Extraordinary Audio of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and he's gonna get this thing hooked up right. If you'd like more information on the equipment that's going in the Jimmy, I have some links in the description box below, including Sundown's website. Also, if you're in the area or don't mind traveling a bit, reach out to Ben at Extraordinary Audio. All of his contact info is also in the description box below. The original AM FM cassette tape radio unfortunately shorted out a while back. And as much as I love keeping things original, I saw this as an opportunity to have a little bit of fun and learn some more about car audio when it comes to doing custom installations like this. The first major hurdle is the head unit because remember, we're changing out a one and a half den for a double den. There are no double den conversion kits available for these trucks to make what we're doing a simple swap. There's also very limited space to work with in the dash, so that's where some of the creativity comes into play. If you take a closer look at the original radio, you'll see that it's a fairly shallow radio because of the positioning of the tape deck. They designed it this way because of the lack of space with the duct work for the center air vents. If we installed the new radio, which is deeper than the original radio, without modifying anything in the dash, it would stick out so far, it would just look terrible. So what we had to do is actually cut the ductwork for those center air vents to be able to push the radio back. We then had to make you know, a new surround to make sure everything was all sealed up nice and proper, and it all turned out great. For the most part, wiring up an aftermarket head unit is not super difficult, but it could be made a lot easier depending on what you drive if you pick up a plug and play harness. Now what a lot of people will do when the original radio needs replacement is replace the one and a half den for an aftermarket single den, some of which have pop out screens. I wanted something a bit cleaner, something that maybe could have looked factory if the technology was available at the time, plus something that had all of the modern features of a new vehicle from Apple CarPlay to tons of media options, a backup camera, Bluetooth, and more. A lot of those features can also be had with the singleton radios that have the pop-out screens, but they don't give off the factory-like look that I'm going for here, and at least in this case, the screen will completely block the center air vents, so that wouldn't work. The radio bezel is going to require a lot of work to fit this larger head unit and we want to keep things more on the symmetrical side so we're actually going to end up centering the radio in the middle of the bezel, which is impossible unless you either relocate or get rid of the back glass release button and the cigarette lighter. I don't care anything about a cigarette lighter so I just got rid of that because there is a 12 volt power outlet still in the center console. but. For the back glass release button, we relocated the wires and put it inside the glove box. Instead of just hacking away at the glove box and not having a super precise fit for that button, Ben actually cut a small square of wood to fit in the factory opening and use as a stencil. So once that's done, drill some pilot holes, cut it out, and the button fit perfect. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and connect all the wires to the radio, double check and make sure everything works proper, and then get the plan together of how we're gonna mount this thing. The display spans seven inches. It's a capacitive touch glass screen. It's very much like a smartphone with a small chrome outline. It's very pretty. There's actually no physical buttons. You have some buttons off to the left, but it's all blended with the screen. Very cool. The next step involved making a set of suitable brackets and getting the radio centered in place. 
It actually fit perfect between the ductwork for the upper air vents and the framework for the storage tray down beneath. Once everything was screwed down, it was as tight as can be. That radio is not going anywhere. The radio is where it needs to be. Now the bezel could be modified accordingly. It's important to remember to measure and double check those measurements because you don't want to cut more stuff away than you need to because it's just going to create more work later down the line. With this bezel, there were some obvious portions that needed to be cut out first just to get the bezel to fit over the radio, but after that it was a bunch of fine tuning, measuring and cutting, measuring and cutting, back and forth, back and forth till the shape was perfect. For everything to look like a factory job by the time all this work is said and done, Ben set out to make a custom faceplate that would be grafted onto the original bezel. It involved taking a sheet of ABS plastic, cutting it down, and making a wooden outline that would fit around the radio. He then took the ABS plastic, the wooden outline, and used it as a stencil to cut the exact shape of the bezel surround to fit around the radio tight with almost no gap. With the rest of the excess cut out, the only remnants of the original bezel was the outline. I think I'm more impressed of the fact that we were able to keep the factory ashtray, even though it's too small to use for anything meaningful, we didn't have to delete it, and that's pretty cool. And so begins the process of making everything look pretty. To build the basic framework of the new radio faceplate, Ben took some extra scraps of ABS plastic, measured them and cut them down to fill in the top, sides, and bottom. The top piece was glued on first to form a bridge between the new faceplate and the original bezel. Then a special fiberglass compound was put over the top to solidify everything. Once the side pieces were glued on, the basic framework for this custom bezel was all finished. It just needed to be finessed. After that, it was a bunch of back and forth, back and forth between sanding, applying more fiberglass, sanding some more, cutting some ABS, filling in holes, just everything that needed to be done to get the final shape perfect. Because again, the focus of this build is to try to keep everything that we're doing sort of factory-ish. So if you look at the dash, there's a lot of sharp angles. There's a lot of angles in the door panels. So this bezel with the shape that Ben came up with fits the character of the truck perfect. Once all the major fiberglass work was finished and sanded down, Ben started to work on getting the bezel nice and smooth. So when it goes back in the truck, it'll look like it was cast from just one piece of plastic. For a nice finishing touch, I ran down to the local O'Reilly Auto Parts and grabbed some Sim texture coating so we can have a factory-like finish to it. I also grabbed some color coat and matched it to the color of the dashboard so everything blends in nicely. Once the vents were put back in, it was time to get this thing fitted in place and wrap everything up. All right, the radio is in, everything is working and looking fantastic. Now let me give you a quick demo. What I really like about this radio, I guess like a lot of aftermarket radios nowadays, is that it comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I have an iPhone, so I'm using Apple CarPlay. It's a really, really cool setup if you've never tried CarPlay before. Some of the phone's standard apps are loaded in here. You have hands-free calling, hands-free messaging, maps, all of your music, but there's also a lot of other apps that are compatible with Apple CarPlay, so once you download them, it'll automatically populate in the system, like Google Maps, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, Waze, Pandora, and more. You have some shortcut buttons off to the side here for like your most recently used apps. There's your home button. You can press this to go back to the main system or back to Apple CarPlay. It's just really easy to use, just like you were using your smartphone. At least for iPhone users, Siri also carries over. If you hit the little microphone in the bottom left, what's the weather like today? It's currently clear and 84 degrees in Moxville. Today's high will be 89 degrees, and the low will be 71. I mean, you've got to admit, if you're a fan of older vehicles, to be able to introduce technology like this in a way that's not overbearing or in a way that distracts from the original character, that's just like having the best of both worlds. 
Aside from Apple CarPlay, the radio has a bunch of other media options available. There's some shortcut buttons in the bottom right there. If we hit this, it brings up the media screen. We're on standard radio right now, so you have AM, FM, tuned down below, hands-free telephone, presets off to the left, and a very detailed equalizer right here. All of the media options are accessed from this drop-down menu. So you have iPod, of course, auxiliary, streaming services like Pandora and Spotify, and of course, a hands-free Bluetooth streaming. Up in the top right, there's a little icon to access settings. There's actually all sorts of stuff that you can customize, including the color of everything. So right now I have the background and the lights off to the left, similar to the digital gauges to kind of keep everything coherent. Having a backup camera isn't super necessary, but when it's compatible and it's just a matter of hooking it up, why not? Last but not least, the bank of controls to the left consists of volume, of course your home button, this one cycles through different menus. There's a little pop-up down below there that has a shortcut for brightness, settings, and currently what's playing, and the hands-free control down below there. If you wanted to turn the whole thing off, just press and hold the home button. Simple as that. Overall, I'm a big fan of how this turned out. I love originality. I'm not normally a fan of touch screens that don't have buttons, but just the way everything worked out in here, it's just perfect. I couldn't have asked for a better setup. And this bezel makes everything look just so close to factory. It's, it's awesome. You see the sharp angles here. There's one that comes over the dash right there. It's just, you know, Ben did a fantastic job. And the tray still opens. Got a little bit less space right now, but it still opens, which is a shocker. Just to recap, we deleted the cigarette lighter because I have a power outlet down in the bottom and the rear glass opening is now in here. Works just like factory. It's kind of impossible to hide things, so I'll give you a sneak peek on what to expect in the next couple of videos. The trunk area is under construction right now, but we have all six crossovers mounted over here. The battery installation is pretty much done, and the amps are gonna be sitting over there. We're just putting the finishing touches on the box. It's gonna sit in this area. The side panels are gonna be modified to kind of flow with everything. It's going to be a real showpiece, and I can't wait to show you guys. The doors are really coming along too. They're just about finished. Everything is wired up. Ben just needs to make some grills for the speaker pods. Well, everyone, that is a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for your patience with this portion of the build. It's taken a really long time to put together, but I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. The Jimmy is coming along very nicely, and I cannot wait to hear this thing. I've never had a custom sound system to this degree before, so it's going to be pretty cool. But anyway, the next video on this, expect the door speaker installation, so there's a lot of fabrication with that it was really really cool watching the panels come together and the third and final video of the audio system build will be finishing up the trunk amp installation battery installation all of the wiring box build lots of stuff to come so if you haven't subscribed already consider doing so also don't forget to leave a like below i really appreciate it and if you subscribe also make sure the notification bell is selected blah 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 anyway i'll see you guys on the next one take care